Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Mondays with Mate. Things in Croatia are actually looking quite good and we are going back to somewhat normal. Our production departments are going back to work, office people are still working at home. Uh, so we are starting up again the production of the C2 and other things. Uh, hopefully things in your countries are also going to become better. And today for the episode I'm joined by Miroslav or Miro or Mirgo as we call him, which is basically the grumpy smurf. Hi everybody, I'm Miroslav Zemčević and I'm the test and development driver of Rimac Automobili. Uh, can you join me in the car because I have work to do today, so... Sounds fun? Yeah. Let's do it. So Mirgot, tell us the story of how you became a Rimac test driver. Well, at that time um, I was working as an automotive journalist and I wanted to be a test driver uh, from you know, always. Um, and uh, Rimac Automobili was basically my best chance. Um, at that time you didn't have the uh, position open for the test driver, but you did have a position open for a marketing assistant. So I started doing that um, and at that time, as you know, we did Everybody did like five jobs in the company, at least. When was that? Which year was that? 2014. So you were like, what, 20 people? Yeah, I think. Like 20 and we were just, just starting, starting to, to, to grow with, uh, with the number of employees. But I think we know each other for quite a longer time, I think, right? Yeah, <laughs> quite a long. I was there when the, the BMW blew up. I was there when when uh, we did some, some uh, uh, drift track days with the white BMW. When it was still combustion engine? Yes. Yeah. Did you ever drive the, the green BMW? Uh, yes. Before you were hired? Uh, yeah. We, for, for first drive was with you, with the really, really basic thing, no seat belts or anything. Fourth gear, uh, doing burnouts. Uh, near your house. <laughs> that was a scary moment for me. Uh, I was a passenger that, that time. We were always taking it very safe. Yeah, 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 <laughs> always. Um, and one time I drove the car, it was, it was um, in a really early stage and I was picking up speed quite, quite quickly. Yeah, but things have changed and now you are, you are doing, uh, let's say, what you came for a long time ago. Basically, I stole your job. <laughs> yeah. But you still do test drive for us. Well, yeah, I think uh, that everybody or many people in the company know that, uh, you know, they first test the car and so on, and then they give it to you. But that no matter what they do, I will still find 10, 20 things, uh, a list of 20 things they need to change after, after I test it. Yeah. So could you tell us what the best part of your job is? I mean, except driving the C2 every day? Except the obvious one, yeah. Um, learning curve, I think that's the, 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 the biggest part because we keep progressing, we keep learning. The things, a lot of things that we are doing with the, with the C2 is uh, basically pioneering stuff. Uh, yes, we have vehicle dynamics, which is, you know, for, for each car, it's uh, the, the same laws of physics, but on the other hand, um, Nobody has four-wheel drive with four, uh, four independent motors. Uh, nobody has this kind of powertrain. So we are pushing the boundaries every day. And interaction with the engineers. That's, I think that's yeah. a thing that people don't realize about test drivers. It's not just to say, ah, it's good or not. But you have to think in engineering language and in mathematical models and know what to change and give them feedback about that. Yeah. Except the obvious thing of, for, for being a test driver, except the obvious thing of, of being able to handle the car, of course, car, car control is the basic thing. Um, I think that communication with the engineers is, is crucial. So engineering background is uh, a, a big plus. So Mergot was in the Zagreb University of Mechanical Engineering and you actually founded, together with a couple of other guys, uh, the Formula Student Team in Croatia, right? Yeah, yeah we started the Formula Student Team. That Which was 2003. Don't bring up years, it makes you <laughs> look so old. 
So yeah, 2003 we started Formula Student Team. Uh, we didn't have a basic idea what we were doing, but we wanted to do um, something with, with cars, something with uh, vehicle dynamics, and of course, something with, with racing. Uh, and that turned out to be uh, one of the biggest projects in, in Croatia that gave us basically really good engineers. Yeah, most of those guys in the end ended up in the company and it's still a great way for us to work with the university and to pick up great guys. But we talked about the nice things of your job, what's the worst? Um, we, we, we do, uh, contrary to popular belief, we do uh, quite a lot of things that tend to be boring. So boring for me, not for the engineers, because for example there are some tests that we need to, to do to, to verify the simulations, so they tend to be at really slow speeds. Um, and of course, the, the, my, my basically, the worst part of my job is doing reports. I don't like to do that. What was, let's say, a dangerous situation that you had? Um, out of the situations that we had, and of course, like, let's be honest, we are doing the prototype testing and we are pushing uh, the limits and we have to, um, we have some, some situations that we come up to, but I, out of all of the situations we gave, came through is, I think that the situation with the, with the Tajima car was basically one of the scariest moments I had, and it was really low speed. So um, it was an early stage of uh, torque vectoring development, and I was exiting the, the, on the track, and at 20 kilometers an hour, the car zigged when it should have zagged. Um, every time after that, we knew what, what was happening. We, we found out quite quickly. But every time after that, when I sat in the car, I was like, you know, you have this huge respect towards the car and you, you do your best to, to be aware of what can happen. Was there ever a moment which was really satisfying to you? There was a moment where I, I was like I cannot stop smiling and that was the moment when I got this car sideways through a really really narrow bend um, and it was really satisfying because it shows the, the, the control that you can have on the car so this car is quite complex and it's quite different to other normal conventional car and you can still drive it with like three fingers of each hand so it's still sensible to, to the driver inputs and this is what we want to achieve. So of course going sideways? Yes. <laughs> How do you keep um, in, in shape during this time? I have an eight month uh, old boy that I take to hikes around the woods and stuff so um, it, it keeps me physically fit I would say um, but I have to, to, for a mental training, just to be precise and stay on my toes, I do sim racing, I do a lot of sim racing. So uh, we started an iRacing community actually in Croatia six months ago. So all of you iRacers out there, if you want to, to challenge me, go ahead. Do you have a proper setup like with steering wheel and everything? Yeah, it, it was really cheap. If you ask my wife, she will say that it's really cheap. <laughs> so, yeah. We won't show her the, the invoices. But what's left to do for the C2 before we ship it to customers, from your perspective? Torque vectoring is, is the biggest thing because we want to, to achieve the most natural feeling that, that can be achieved with the torque vectoring and still have um, exploited the full potential of the torque vectoring. Um, because um, as you know, with four, four electric motors that are independent, you have to have a uniform force pulling you, not to feel that the car is squirming around. Uh, we, we need to do the, my favorite part of the development, which is the development of drift mode. Things are, are going in, a, in the right direction. I'm really confident and happy uh, with, with how things are shaping up. Um, we have huge potential and of course for, for me the car will never be finished. At one point we have to stop with the development and say okay this is it. Um, but I'm, I'm sure that it's going to be it's, it's going to be one of the most important cars of the new era and I'm not exaggerating.
next time we should do this on the racetrack. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Thank you for watching another episode. As always, please ask us any question you like and let us know who you would like to participate in the next episodes, any engineering team member or anybody else from the company. Uh, let us know who that would be and they will join us next time. Until then, have a great week. I hope you are staying safe and somewhat at least enjoying maybe a little bit more free time than usually. See you next time. Ciao.